has announced Kyrie Irving has been fined 50 grand and was placed on a five-day quarantine after violating the league's health and safety protocols. That was for that party he attended without a mask last week. Now, according to Bobby Marks, if you put the five days into which games he missed for those reasons, Kyrie is going to forfeit $816,000 in salary for the two games he missed this week. Stimulus checks, that is. Now, sources telling our Adrian Wojnarowski, Kyrie is expected to play against the Magic tomorrow. Steve Nash was asked about that in a press conference today. He had no details on how the reintegration would go. He said, I have no update on how Kyrie would get back reintegrated into the team to play tomorrow. So we will still wait and see. Welcome to The Jump. I am Rachel Nichols alongside Coach David Fisdale, 2008 Finals MVP, Paul Pierce. And guys, coming up, we got Luka versus Giannis tipping off in less than five <laughs> hours right here on ESPN. Oh, yeah. Later in the show, we will handicap the MVP race where these two are the front runners in Vegas. Woo! First, though, we begin today's show with, of course, James Harden. Just made his first public appearance as a member of the Nets, spoke to reporters virtually in the last few minutes, addressed a lot of the lingering questions surrounding his departure from Houston and his future in Brooklyn. Take a listen. What does it represent? What does it mean to you? Uh, it means a lot. Just, uh, you know, coming for, you know, eight years in Houston and then, you know, having a fresh start with some unbelievable talent and um, obviously the coaching staff, the front office uh, from top to bottom, uh, the welcome has been amazing, you know, so it's a fresh start for me to, to go out there and ultimately have a chance to, to compete at a title. Bruce Beck, NBC New York. Hey, James, what's your message to Nets fans on what kind of player and what kind of teammate they're getting? Um, an elite player, an elite teammate, um, an elite leader, um, and just a guy that's willing to do whatever it takes um, to rack up as many, as many wins as we can, um, sacrifice. Brian Lewis, New York Post. Hey, James. Uh, welcome. Uh, following up on that, I mean, you've proven yourself to be an elite player, and KD's an elite player, Kyrie's an elite player. All you guys have had the ball in your hands and been asked to make big shots. I'm curious how the three of you make sure that you guys come together and keep the main thing the main thing and find a way to gel for the greater good. Chemistry. Uh, sacrifice and and like you said, we're all elite, you know. So depending on the game, depending on you know what's going on throughout the course of the game, that's going to determine who gets the ball and, and who makes the plays. Um, we're all unselfish. We're all willing passers, and we're we play basketball the right way, um, and that's all that matters. Otis Livingston, CBS New York. Hey, James, welcome to Brooklyn. Um, from your post-game comments after the Lakers lost to what your teammates were saying about you as far as being disrespectful uh, and also you being held out of practice until a trade was made, it got pretty ugly at the end of your tenure in Houston. Is there any part of you that regrets the way that it ended? This was, I wasn't disrespectful to anyone. Um, those guys, I just got there, Houston. Um, I've been there for a very long time. I've been through all the ups and downs, um, you know, with that organization. And I wasn't disrespectful towards anyone. You know, I just made a comment, you know, that the team as a, as a whole wasn't good enough to compete for a title. And, you know, at the stage of my career, right, where I am now, um, that's what I would love, you know. And so I wasn't trying to be disrespectful to anybody, um, especially not to the organization. And um, like I said, just I'm, I'm excited to be here in Brooklyn. And, um, you know, excited for a new start. But do you re do you regret the way it ended, though? I mean, it's a place that you loved and you had so many highlights. Yeah, I, I, re I regret because I'm not the type of guy to, you know, I don't need the attention, especially the negative energy, the negative attention. Like, I've never been that guy. Um, you know, so there was, there was some things you know, I felt like out of my character. Um, but the ultimate goal was to get somewhere, um, you know, where I can compete. And here I am in Brooklyn. You know, I have nothing but love and respect for that organization, uh, that city, um, and everything that has, they've done for me and my family. 
Uh, much respect. Hey, James. Uh, first and foremost, welcome to Brooklyn. Thank you. Um, I guess you would know better than any of us in this room that, you know, winning a championship is not easy, right? You know, there's 30 teams, you know, of those 30, maybe five or six have real chances to win it. Um, you've been part of those five or six for God knows how long since you've been in Houston. Uh, you've had multiple runs deep. You've had it with different players from Chris Paul, Russell Westbrook, uh, Melo, Dwight. Uh, I'm just curious as to what gives you the confidence that this time around will be different and that this group can get it done. Um, you, I mean, obviously, you got Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving on the team. <laughs> and then surrounded by those guys, um, you have really good pieces in DeAndre, uh, Jeff, Shooters, um, and Joe, uh, Landry. Um, and, I mean, you just look at this entire roster and it's built um, for any style of, of basketball you want. Um, and then the coaching staff who, you know, knows the game of basketball at a high level, you just add that all together. And it's like, uh, that's a, that's a legit chance right there. It was a no brainer for me. Rachel Nichols, ESPN. Hey James. Uh, obviously so many great players go without winning a title. There's guys in the hall of fame without winning a title. But how about you? How do you see your career in terms of how important it is to actually win that title, to complete what you want to do in basketball? Uh, it's not a guarantee that me coming to Brooklyn is, you know, guaranteeing a title, Rachel. But I think for me, giving myself a chance is very, very important. Um, you know, at younger... You know, giving myself a chance, but... You know, wanting to get paid and wanting to wanting to take care of my family was very, very important to me. Now the stage of my career is giving myself a chance to do something that I haven't accomplished yet in this league. And that was that's very important to me now. And that's the situation that I'm in. And that's why I'm here in Brooklyn. Um, I'm excited for the new opportunity. Uh, obviously, we know it's not easy. It's not going to be easy at all. But, um, you know, with, with this roster and this coaching staff and this organization, um, I think we have a legit chance. I know you're obviously still getting acclimated to this team, but when you look at yourself and you look at the pieces, what parts of your game do you envision, you know, staying the same for this to work? And what parts do you envision changing uh, for this to work with this team? Very good question. I think um, for me, my play playmaking ability, um, we have two elite scores that the world knows already. Um, my job is to come out here, obviously score the basketball when needed, but my playmaking ability, whereas getting getting our shooter shots, getting our bigs, finishes around the rim, and making the, making the entire team better. Um, I think that's one aspect of my game that will will excel in, in, in this offense. And um, as long as I'm you know making my teammates better, it's not, it doesn't matter about the points. Like I think everybody knows that I can score the ball at a high clip, um, and that's where the sacrifice comes in at. So a lot there, guys, to unpack. But I give James a lot of credit, by the way. He answered every question. There was no, I don't want to talk about that, or no comment. Paul, you were a part, of course, of the Celtics' big three, mm -hmm. KG, Ray Allen, and yourself. Fizz, you coached the Heat. You were the lead assistant on the bench with the big three with, of course, LeBron, Wade, and Bosh down in Miami. So I have to ask you guys, hearing all of that, including what James just said about adapting his play and changing and becoming a little bit more of a playmaker, what do you guys think the biggest challenge is, Paul, for how this big three is going to come together? Well, James said it. Uh, I heard him say it a couple times, the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it can't be the James Harden that he was in Houston. But my question is to the, to the New Jersey Nets is the style of play. Jersey? I mean, the Brooklyn Nets. Where are you going, man? Listen, we saw, we, they were Brooklyn Nets when you were there, Paul. We once, we once said that we would never see a jump shooting team win a championship, then you had the Golden State Warriors. Of course. Warriors. Right. And now you have three great one-on-one -on -one players. Is this the year that we have a one-on-one -on -one team hmm. style of play? I mean, that's who they are. I mean, am I going to ask James to cut back door? Am I going to ask him to spot up? Am I going to ask the same of Kyrie? So my question is, what style of play? Can they be the first one-on-one -on -one team, ISO team to win? Hmm. We, we have yet to see. And, and, I, and I don't know what style of play that's going to be because you have to use these players to their strength. But the sacrifice, that's going to be the biggest things in James yeah. is going to have to do in order for this team to succeed. Yeah, and that's, that's the word I kept hearing, sacrifice. 
And Spo used to have a great saying, sacrifice is easy until it's you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so we're going to see if these guys are willing to sacrifice. And what does that look like? What does that mean? That means that time of possession with the ball mm -hmm. as an individual. You got to make decisions quicker now because you got two other stars sitting on the weak side. Mm -hmm.